Good afternoon, PR Construction. Hi, um, my name's Bertram. This the construction place? Yes. Uh, yep, I'm your man. You're your man? Oh, you are, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay, and how is that? Well, I'm a damn fine carpenter. You need to come in and fill out an application. What's your name? Jan. Jan. Mm -hmm. Jan, uh, let me be up front with you. I lost uh, most of the fingers on my right hand to a hypoid saw. Okay. So I don't write real good. Okay. Uh, so the application thing's a little sketchy. Well, actually, what you need to do is you would need to speak to a foreman. L listen, I, I'm, I don't have, um, I mean, I have a right leg, but it's the same as not having one. Mm -hmm. Well, just so you know, it is for a hardware installer. You do have to have your own truck, and you do have to have your own tools. 72 Ford F-250, lumber okay. rack, bed box, and a bumper sticker that says, Sierra Club, take a hike to hell. Okay. Kiss my ass, you tree huggers. There you go. Kiss it. <laughs> uh, the Sierra Club, those pansies, same guys who sat stateside while I was in Nam in country. Yeah. Well, yeah. Knee see. deep in a rice paddy. There you go. Leeches, they sizes of Frisbees on my oh, neck, old M-16 right. over my head, mm. looking out for Charlie. Yep. Goddamn cows were booby trapped. You know about that. <laughs> I yeah. know. Lost I a lot of it. friends over there. But you are alive, and that's a good thing. But McCann isn't, and neither is Hernandez or Jackson or DiGiacomo. Yeah. Whole platoon went up. Espinosa, yeah. Big but Ed. But they're, they're, they're up Ed. above. No. Well, yeah, McCann and Hernandez is not, not Jackson. Okay. Yeah, he was into Satan. You never know. <laughs> Me and him smoked hash out of a human skull. You never know. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I was dead. Yeah, well, no, you're on this good earth for I don't a know. reason. Sometimes when I'm up there on the scaffolding, you know, up on the third floor, mm -hmm. I think about tying a twist lock cord around my neck and just diving. Well, Just no. taking the big plunge. If you're still here and just you've go gone through all of that, you most likely wouldn't die anywhere because God's got a reason for you to be here. Yeah, yeah, t tell that to McCann, Hernandez, to Jack. Yeah, oh, to I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, Pierce and Honeycutt. Yep. Manny, so. Mo and Jack. <laughs> So if you want to come in, sir, and, and speak with the foreman, um, you are more than welcome. Left a piece of myself over there, you know? Yeah, and and yeah. they'll be more than happy to... And three kids. And three or four do what kids. you need to do. Yeah. <sighs> okay. You know, the only thing that made the pain go away was the heroin. Oh. I had to chase that dragon. Yeah, chase that dragon. And then I come stateside and I'm supposed to be cured? No, nobody's never cured for life from that. I'm shaving out of an army helmet. I'm getting shot at and banging yeah. underage whores, doing smack be... all day long. And I'm supposed to just get a job in a hardware store? That's right. You're supposed to be a normal human being after all that, huh? No wonder I took a claw hammer to one of the customers. Yeah. <laughs> you guys do drug tests? Yes, we do. Uh, which drugs does that cover? They All of them. They do a hair test. I don't have hair. I'm like one of them cats. Oh, I burnt well, off. Yeah. Napalm mortar landed, right? That, that's what took the Giacomo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in that case, I don't know. You'd have to speak with the foreman on you, that one. You guys got 401k plan? Or? Yes, we do. Medical 401k. Profit yeah. sharing? I'm sorry? Profit sharing? Uh, yes. Paid vacation? Uh, yes. I know this sounds crazy, but can I take this week? Yeah, no. Sorry, don't work that way. <laughs> I was willing to die for this country. I can't get a week. I know. That's how it is. All right. <laughs> okay. God be with you. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks for holding, Mr. Barron. Baron? Yes, sir. Baron, this is Bertram. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, you guys got lost and found over there? This is it. Oh, perfect. Uh, listen, Baron, I was at a function over there a couple nights back. Right. And um, I lost a leg. I mean, I lost it in Nam, but I lost a prosthetic leg. Okay. Is, is there one there? Hold on one second. It's It's the right one. No, sir, I don't see one. Did you give a good look, see? Yes, sir. No no one's turned in anything, nothing prosthetic. That, is it black or white? Is, is that funny? No, they, they think it's funny that I, I lost a leg in Nam. Baron Von Smartass? Yes, sir. You, you know what it's like to lose a leg to a landmine? You know that feeling? Of course you don't. You're Excuse fox trotting and bunny hopping through life. Right. Jesus Christ. The, uh, the cussing can stop. Listen, I'm trying to do my best to help you. All right, listen, goddammit, kid. When you lose a leg, that gives you license to cuss. Well. You think you're lying there in a rice paddy in Da Nang with a bloody stump and you're going fudge? Oh, right. gosh darn it. My leg's gone. Well. All right, Baron. You're a decent kid. Yes, sir. Circumcised? Sir? 
Circumcised? Uh, if I'm circumcised or not, it doesn't have anything to do with your leg. Listen, I've been cut. You should be cut, too. Excuse me? My leg. It's gone. Your foreskin's nothing. Huh? You're I mean, missing my, your foreskin. Being circumcised does not mean that you... I'm sorry you lost your leg. I'm my missing God. my goddamn leg. Okay. It was my lucky leg. At least you didn't lose your penis. How dare you? How dare you, sir? I'm sorry. I'm a but Christian... You're talking about you're talking about a veteran and an American. I understand. I understand you're a veteran. Three tours I did. You couldn't handle three tours with air supply, you pussy. There you go. Because the reason this country's free because of guys like me. I understand that. My father was in the military too, sir. Right, right. Probably working on a laundry ship, pussy. Okay, let me tell you something, sir. That's enough. You talk about my father, that's when I find you and kick your ass and break your other damn leg. Private pussy. What was he, one of those uh, comfort girls? Keeping yeah, the soldiers that's happy? Was. That's what he was. He comforted your wife while your ass was over there. How dare you attack me? Yeah, how dare you attack me? You're calling my damn circumcision penis, and then you're talking about my fucking dad. Now how, I'm going to start cussing. How, year, how dare you use that language in front of me? Huh? I was a decorated seal. I understand that. What was your dad doing? Slinging hash stateside? Probably blowing Bob Hope when he rolled into town with the USO show. Wuss. Take him out with piano wire. Like a hawk, I swoop down and take out yeah. my prey. Yes, sir. All right, I'm coming down there. Okay, come on. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll look forward. Hopefully I have it when you get here. All right, Baron. Okay. Now I'll buy you a beer. Chief Chief Movers may help you. Yeah, um, do you move just about anything? Um, pretty close. Uh, all right, um... I, I got a little situation here. Um, my my wife is she's big, she's, uh, morbidly obese. She's about six hundred pounds, and she she can't be moved on her own. I mean, she doesn't move, and I got to get her to the uh, university hospital. And is that is that something you guys could do? Are you serious? Uh, unfortunately, yeah. Um, let me call the hospital and see if we can. You know, which would be the state. Well, listen, uh, don't worry about them. They wanted 3500 bucks to get her there. But, I mean, maybe they could tell us the easiest way to do it. Like well, I, I, I seen it on Jenny Jones. What I'm going to do is just take out the bedroom window and part of the wall, and I'm going to forklift her out to the front lawn, and then we just need her to get from the forklift onto the truck and to the ambulance entrance at the hospital. Actually, I don't think we could because no one can ride in the back of the trucks. Why not? Because it's against the law. Well, who's going to know? We just shut the gate up, be like um, smoking the bandit or something. No one's going to know. I guess we could. I, I, I mean, I... I you I'll, got the forklift already? I'll pay cash. Yeah, I rented the forklift. And my brother-in-law can drive the thing pretty good because he works at a warehouse. And he's going to swing her around. I mean, if we can get the forks up under the bed... And, I mean, we're going to strap her down and okay, you know, put a tarp over her blanket and stuff so she doesn't get cold. You, you guys got a flatbed or a steak bed? Um, they're just uh, actually moving trucks. They're, uh, they're enclosed. But you can fork it right onto the, into the truck. Now, are we going to have to flag her or are we going to be able to close the door? Oh, we'll be able to close the door. All right. What, what do you think something like this would cost? Uh, $148, our two-hour minimum. Yeah, do you guys got some, does that include some furniture pads and stuff like that? Yeah, the truck's fully equipped. All right, I'm going to sedate her pretty good before we do this, because she's a complainer. All right, give her a bunch of Valium or something? Valium, and, well, it's a, it's a it's Robitussin Valium and peppermint schnapps, and she goes out. It's like darting a rhino. <laughs> All right. You, you guys got that bubble wrap? Oh, no, we, we have we bubble wrap, but I don't think we should bubble wrap her. Here's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about maybe when she sedated, her arm coming off the bed, the bed rolling into the side, and us denting up her elbow pretty good. I mean, we could strap her down with tie downs if you want. Yeah, all right. We'll use tie Is that extra? No. All right, so just we'll just use tie downs on her, not too tight? Um, yeah, you could ride in the back with her, you know, just make sure she doesn't wake up. Well, I don't, I don't want to get back there in case you guys stop short, and I don't want to get pinned between the, the side of the cab and the bed, you know? Uh-huh. You know what it's like making love to a 600-pound woman? No idea. Imagine humping a tremendous beanbag. <laughs> are, are you a married guy? No, no. Uh, yeah, don't, don't. Uh, don't, ever, don't ever. Don't ever. Don't ever. 109 <laughs> pounds this bitch weighed when I married her. 
109. 109. Not 110. Damn. Yeah. How she just let herself go like that? You know how it is. You you blink your eye and she's morbidly obese. What's the doctor going to do for her? Well, he, they they got this uh, gastro bypass surgery where they they put like a um, zip tie on her on her gut and she can't hold nothing down. You know, she can eat like a couple of children's aspirin each day and anything more than that. She she heaves. Damn, that's a good idea. Yeah, you know, you know, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but one time I I got a little souse and I was having at her. Ten minutes into it, I realize I'm in a fold. Oh, you, you know that's like. I mean, you, you got to take, take a good, hard look in the mirror the next morning. You're in a fold. 14 <laughs> years of marriage, I'm humping a fold. <laughs> Man, I feel for you. Yeah. All right. Hey, you, you, you've you been a big help. No problem. And don't ever get married. Ever. I won't. <laughs> All right, pal. All right, bye. Hello? Hello. This is the security guard, please? Yes, it is. Oh, great. My name's Bertram. I'm new to the area, and I'm looking for a job. Okay, right now we're not hiring because we don't have any openings. Not hiring, huh? No. Not hiring guys that did three tours in Nam and are third-degree black belts in Taekwondo? Not at the moment. Not hiring a guy who can take an AK-47 blindfolded, break it down, oil it, and reassemble it in less than four minutes? You're not hiring any of them? We don't. Not hiring a guy who can kill a man using only his thumb on his left hand? Well, we don't have any openings at the moment, so if we hire you, we don't Not have any openings. hiring a guy it. who modified his AK-47 to go full automatic and added a 40-round banana clip to it? You're not hiring that guy? <laughs> not hiring a guy who customized his van so it looked like the A-Team van? You're not going to hire that guy? You're not going to hire a guy who laid his life on the line for this country so that you could go home to your lesbian partner and live in a judgment-free society? I think you are hiring that guy. Hello? Hello? Can I help you? You guys hiring? No, we're not. You're not, huh? No. You're not hiring a guy who was a master in the Shotokan discipline of the martial arts and who trained Green Berets for four years on the Mekong Delta before he began his street year tour? Um. You're not hiring a guy who can slide in like a viper and take his prey out with piano wire and well, never be detected? Sir, but we haven't got any vacancies. No vacancies, huh? Indeed. Now, who is this, Mr. Belvedere? Mr. Who? I ran into your kind when I was in Nam. A squad leader with your accent. Never did get along with the man. Ended up killing him in a bar fight. But that's beside the point. That right is beside the point. You guys need qualified personnel. Yes or no? I believe you're speaking to one, sir. You got a bunch of guys who couldn't pass a GED. The cholesterol level is 370. Me, who, who are you exactly? I'm Bertram, Vietnam vet and American. Right. I come in there with my own uniform, and I play by my own rules. And what do we, we guard? Malls? I don't know who you, who you are, sir. I've answered your question. Now you're going somewhere else. Tell you what, guys like you and them, we chewed you up and spit you out. Okay, whatever. Have a nice day, sir. Goodbye. Yeah, you end up on the bottom of some guy's boot. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Well, my name is Marie. Hi, Marie. I'm Bertram. You guys have horses over there? Yes, we do. I got a wife who's a big gal. Uh-huh. We can't really weigh her, but somewhere... I, I, I'd estimate between uh, 500 and 800 pounds. She's, okay. uh, but she's tall. She carries it well, five, nine and a half. And uh, she rode horses quite a bit as a youth and uh, loves that movie, International uh -huh. Velvet. And uh, it's coming up on our 15th anniversary, and uh, I promised her I'd get her on the back of a horse come Saturday. And what did you want to do on a horse? She wanted to uh, run barrels. <laughs> no, no I'm, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We just, uh, just trot. Uh, for just how long? Do a little trail riding. A little trail riding. Yeah, just, you know, half a day or until the horse gave out. <laughs> and I tried to talk her out of it. I said, you know, why don't we just turn the bed toward the window and look at the lawn or 
and get a TV dinner and I'll put some cable on. We'll have a romantic evening. But uh, she wants to get on the back of a horse, God bless her. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a make-a-wish foundation type thing for me. She's uh, morbidly obese. She doesn't have many days left on this earth. And uh, I'd like to see the woman happy. Well, we can do it. Um, it just depends on how the horse is going to handle this. Thing. Right. Any Clydesdales? Well, we have a, a Belgian quarter horse. Quarter. You're going to need uh, at least a three-quarter horse for this bitch. <laughs> You have any obese horses? No. <laughs> oh. How would we get her up on that horse? Well, we have uh, mobile home stairs. Mobile home stairs. Mm. She took a set of those out once when we were visiting my in-laws uh, last summer. I don't think that's going to hold her. Oh. Maybe uh, block and tackle and an oak tree or uh, if you got a cherry picker. Or, um, well, if you bring the, old, the uh, block and tackle, I guess we could hoist her up in a tree. Once we lowered her down onto the horse, the horse would be all right, huh? So uh, if I'm going to put your wife on a $4,000 horse, right. can you bring me cash in the, in the amount of $4,000? Oh, oh I'm saying so basically you want to deposit. Yeah, in case the horse breaks his back. All right, and then what? We'd have to put the horse down. Right, I bring a gun too, and after you pay me the four thousand dollars, and you and the horse, your wife and the horse fall down, then I keep the money and you shoot the horse. Um, a gun, any kind, revolver, twenty-two. Oh, block. a revolver between the ears is good. Revolver be good, forty-four. Yeah, that'll work. And uh, how many rounds of ammo? Oh, uh, how good a shot are you? Well, the guns against the horse's head. Right. Pretty good from that range. How much for the actual ride itself, if everything goes okay? couple hundred dollars. All right, $4,200 and uh, 44 What if my wife is injured? Are you going to pay for her? No, you'll sign a release. Well, well, now wait a minute. If the horse is injured, I'm buying the horse. Well, your wife rides at her own risk. Well, I mean, that doesn't sound right. I mean, if... if, if, if oh, look, I don't want to go on with this. Okay, I'll say. I'll, I'll just bring some extra ammo in case the wife is injured. Okay. All right. Goodbye. Hello. Hello. Is this the UFO place? Yes, it is. Oh, great. My name is uh, Bircham, and um, I believe I was abducted. Are you the right person to speak to about this? You, you got him. Oh man. You gotta forgive me. I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit, a little bit shaken. What's uh, first off? What should I do? I don't know what to do. Well, what, uh, is it okay to use the microwave? Can I drive the car? You could. It just depends on exactly, you know, are you injured in any way? or? I do have some rectal bleeding. Uh, not what I would consider a large amount. Not more than I've had in the past. Although it has not done that in a number of years, and it does concern me. I, I, I mean, I do feel like I was probed. Then you, you may have been, put it that yeah, way. Yeah, big time, big time. Right. Yeah. Hey, and by the way, as far as the probing goes, uh, they can't go in through the mouth. It's always the anus. It seems like one could probe in, in the mouth. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, well, depend, it depends on what their purpose is. There's been probes uh, in the ears. Oh, really? And in, and, in, and in the nose as well. Yeah, I wasn't on that ship. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was on the USS Anus. No, uh, no dinner, no dance, no how do you do, just, uh, right for the pooper. You believe me, right? I wasn't there, so if you say you were, I assume you were. Yeah. These were, uh, the, me the, the creatures were sort of, uh, smooth. You know, what color? Oh, well, white, for the most part. I think there was one Mexican. They had like a... Rode on uh, dirt bikes. They look like dirt bikes. And Duros or something. I mean, I, I don't know. It's a little sketchy because I did some peyote and I fell asleep in the desert and uh, woke up. I had a Schlitz uh, tall boy in my rectum and I, I probably wasn't abducted. Yeah, I, come to think of it, I, I was just, I was raped by teenagers. Okay, I'll go with that. <laughs> they uh, shaved my ass uh, so, so they looked like crop circles. These weren't aliens. I think they were illegal aliens. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, could have been. Yeah, all right. I'll just uh, I'll get into therapy or start drinking or both. See you, E.T. Okay. Nana, nana. Thank you. This is Ashley. 
Hi, Ashley. My name's Bertram. Hi. Hi there. You have a swimming program for kids? Um, it's for people 15 and older. Mm-hmm. I might might be able to beat you on a technicality here. Uh, my kids are conjoined. They're Siamese. Uh-huh. And they're eight years old. Uh-huh. So their combined age is 16, and I think we got you now because we beat the 15 cutoff there. Okay. They're performers. They perform in the circus. They don't know how to swim, and it's important to me that they stay alive. Uh-huh. They're my source of income. Uh-huh. They, do they do mouth-to-mouth, to mouth resuscitation? I'm not sure if, if they would allow allow them to swim because just because their combined age. You I ever deal with conjoined twins? No, sir. No, you have not. But they're just like you and me. Well, I'm not, sir. I'm not saying that they're not like us. No, I'm they're just, they're just like if they crazy glued you and me together. Yes, sir, I understand they're that. They're exactly the same. Um, when you see the smiles on these kids' faces, you will light up because they light up a room. They light it up, baby. Yes, sir. All right. If you can get the okay from the director, you know, you're more than welcome to bring them in. But, Ashley, you're going to do what everyone has done to these kids their whole lives. You're going to pass them off. They're going to get some bureaucrat or some answering machine. And then the only water they'll feel on their body is their own tears as it rolls down their conjoined chest. So let me just tell you something real quick. I'm a social work major. Mm -hmm. I totally understand where you're coming from. You have, and, con you have conjoined twins yourself? No, but no, I've worked. No, you don't. Then you don't understand. You don't know what it's like to grow up with Tweedledee and Tweedledum. You don't understand the pain. You don't know what I'm through. I'm a veteran. I'm an American. And I don't deserve this. Well, I know that. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not at all saying that you don't. I'm just, I know you need a pool for them to be in. I'm sorry, miss. I've, I've been under a lot of pressure. I understand that. They wanted bunk beds this year. I had oh. to get them two lower ones. I know. It's very difficult. One of them loves macaroni and cheese. The other one is lactose intolerant. Imagine what that's like every day. I, I can't imagine because I've never dealt okay. with it. All right, I'm going to bring the kids by and dump them in the pool. Okay. I'll see you. Okay, thank you. This is Troy. Troy, my name's Bertram. Yeah. I'd like to coach some Pop Warner football. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, right now we're all filled up with that. We've already started. We're already going through the season, so. Got a kid who wants to play some ball, too. Call me next, like I said, in March or so. He's 12 years old. He's a big boy, though. I don't care how big it is. We don't play Pop Warner rules here. What what rules do we play? I play. I got my own rules here, buddy. Oh, really? So we don't use the weight limits. We got my own weight limits. I like your style. Yeah, we got a little different weight limits. I got a son. He's 11 and a half. He's almost 250 pounds. Yeah, it's a big kid. He's a big boy. Uh-huh. This kid will sit down and eat 9, 10 Lunchables in one sitting. That's a big kid. Oh, he's a big boy. Takes after his mother. So he'll be a sixth grader coming up next year? He's going to be going into the sixth grade. I held him back a year so I could get his playing weight up. Yeah? Yeah, he's a big kid, and you know what? I taught him well. I guess so. He knows all the moves. Spearing, blindsiding, forearm shiver. He does it all. He'll take really? a kid's head off. Oh, yeah. yeah. I seen him hit the punter 20 minutes after the guy punted the ball. I mean, the kid was on the sideline. He went after him. Even oh, man, when this kid goes up the middle, he goes in hell-bent for re-election. Heck of a kid. And I tell you, I taught the kid well. I guess so. I told him, you get blown out of that middle, you're getting blown out like crap through a goose. I hear you. Yeah. I'll tell uh, you, yeah, yeah, you I tell what I tell, I tell they call it Pop Warner football. You know why? Because you Pop Warn you if you get hurt. That's what I tell him. You, you got it. Yeah, kid's tough. Big okay. kid, needs a special helmet. Uh, we'll see what we got, buddy. First year he played, I couldn't find one big enough. We had to modify a Coleman cooler. You put a Coleman cooler on his Well, head? not the full size, sir. Not the one you put trout in, but the six-pack one. Oh, the six-pack Coleman cooler? Yeah. I put it in the oven, I heat it up, and I mold it around his head. You put the, put the cooler in the oven and heat it up and put it on his head? Well, you, Holy yeah, cow. 
Well, you don't heat it up till it starts bubbling. You just warm it up so the plastic becomes pliable, and then you can pull it on his head, and if you hit it with the hose, it'll freeze in whatever position it was. Okay, that's crazy. Worked out good, except for the ear holes got screwed up and they got an infection. Uh-huh. I call him the Minister of Defense. I got you, buddy. I train my kids. They're like screaming warriors. I got you, buddy. Let me get it. I got a call coming, buddy. All right. Thanks. All right, no weight limits, right? Right on, brother. All righty. Later. Hello? Ma'am, I'm, I'm looking to speak to a person who resides at 615 Walnut Avenue in Paintsville. No, this is a little town about five miles uh, south of Paintsville. Mm-hmm. Just what I thought. Uh, are you aware of the sinkhole? Have you noticed any soil movement? Has the house shifted off of its footing? Yeah. It has? Yeah. It, was the house bolted? No. And the house is slid off of the mud sill on top of the footing. No, it's not slid off. It's just that the, the footing uh, has sunk down some. Right. Just a little bit. That's why I called. There is a sinkhole in your area. <clears throat> Are you aware that uh, there was coal mines here in this area? Yes, and uh, that was a conclusion that we had come to. Part of the erosion problem with the sedimentary level of the bedrock and uh, some of the sand... A and D type sands were caused by the early mining of that region. Mm -hmm. It's imperative that you follow a few basic regulations before we take care of the sinkhole so that you or your family is not in any imminent danger. Okay. All right. First off, no moving of any furniture. Any sudden movement could activate the sinkhole. Are you writing this down, ma'am? Yes. Yeah. Also, no digging in the yard. Do you have a dog? No. How about a retarded child? A what? A child who may enjoy digging in the yard? Yeah. Please keep him out of the yard. Also, no vigorous lovemaking. Believe it or not, I've seen many people go down that way. You're married, ma'am? Yes. You make love vigorously? That's none of your business. Sorry, ma'am, but I'm making it my business because safety is my business. Do you agree not to engage in any vigorous lovemaking? Here at home, I will. If you want to come down to the city and use one of the auxiliary garages, that'd be perfectly fine. We encourage that. Uh, please refrain from flushing the toilets more than twice a week. Would you consider defecating into a bucket? What would the difference be? Well, it's the flushing of the toilet, ma'am, that causes the problem. Are you a big woman? Yeah. How big do you go? No, you didn't. You've already told me that you make vigorous love to your husband. So what? I'd say in the three to four hundred range. Who is it? And by the way, your uh, husband deserves the Medal of Honor for making love to a beanbag. Get to your point. Well, my point is, is uh, for the next two weeks, until we can get a rig out there, again, no moving of any furniture, no digging in yard, no vigorous lovemaking, and that includes fellatio, and please, number two in a bucket. No bullshit phone calls. Ma'am? What? We're going to be uh, bringing the uh, backhoe and the bobcats out there in the next week or so, and we just uh, appreciate uh, full compliance. We clear? Yeah. As soon as I take this recording, I just made over to the sheriff's office. We'll see how clear we are. You recorded this? Well, guess what? I recorded it, too, and I'm going to put it on basic cable. Support services, this is Courtney. All right. Uh, you involved with the Neighborhood Watch? Mm-hmm. Oh, fantastic. My name's Bertram. I'm moving to the Wichita area in just a couple of weeks, and I want to get involved with some community policing. You know the address? N uh, I don't have it in front of me. My, my wife has that information, you know. That's a lady's work. Right. What a man does is police. Really? I didn't know that. Yes, indeed, indeed. I'm a cop, and our Neighborhood Watch officer's a cop, too. She's a girl. Well... You broads are going to have to get in the back of the squad car when Bertram rolls to town. I'll tell you that right now. Because I do the driving. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. You remember T.J. Hooker? Yeah. Yeah. You didn't see Heather Locklear driving the rig, did you? No. T.J. was behind the wheel. And you didn't see Heather Locklear sliding over the hood, did you? Or dragging down perps. T.J. Boy, did the real that. policing. You guys can pose as prostitutes and I'll drive the rig. All right. You're, you're a lady, right? 
Yeah. And you're a police officer. Mm-hmm. Do they give you a gun? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. My goodness. I could understand some pepper spray, maybe a baton Where or something. Where am I going to pepper spray? Well, you, you listen, little lady, that gun, that gun's dangerous. It's like a weapon. Yeah, that's what I have it for. I mean, aren't, you, aren't they scared you're going to shoot yourself in the foot? And... I think the last person to shoot himself in the foot was the guy. Let me tell you something. When I was in Nam, we didn't have no ladies but comfort ladies. That's really? all we had. That's all they got. You know, you just do this. They give you a rub down. They get you some tea. We don't have any of those here. Hmm. All right, let me just explain something. I don't want that neighborhood watch business where I walk around with a walkie-talkie, and if I see something oh, no. suspicious, I phone somebody. No. no way. I'm going in through the front door. I see something going down. I see, uh, for instance, a uh, husband committing sodomy on his wife or something. I'm right through the front door. Guns are blazing. I take no names. Shoot first and ask questions later. That's always been my policy. Alrighty, cowboy. We'll just go ahead and call up the patrol yeah. north and, and see your community police officer. Yeah, I don't play by the book either. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't even play by the rules. I'm such an outlaw. I don't even play by my own rules. <laughs> okay. You falling in love with me? Not quite. You're a single lady? No. No, you got a man? Yeah. You tell that uh, so-called man you're married to to meet me out on the edge of town at sundown. We'll see who comes back. Okay. All right, there, mama. Bye. <laughs> This is Charlene. How may I help you? Hi, listen. Um, I got a guy in my store. He's been uh, wandering around the store. He seems disoriented. He's been here for a couple hours now, and he gave me this phone number. Uh, could you guys come pick him up? Or, your ho store hold on, hold on. He wants he wants the phone here. I like. I'm hungry. I like to come and get my food now. Okay, who am I speaking with? Uh, this is Stompy. 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 Can y'all come get me? Okay, Stompy, let me, let me speak to the guy, the other guy. Uh, hold on, what's your name, man? My name is Charlene. Charlene, Charlene, I want to get to know you. But let me speak to the other gentleman, Stompy. Hey, you like the blues, baby? Uh, they're okay. Charlene, Charlene, mm, 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 are you hungry for me? Yeah. Mm, mm, my name is Stumpy. Cause I want that rump Shaka daka laka boo. What you wearing, babe? What kind of draw you got on? Yeah, oh. Hold on a second. I need to get the nurse, okay? Oh, look out. Charlie don't go. Charlie don't go. Okay, look, I'm, I'm going to have to hang up on you. I don't know who uh, you are. I says my name's Stumpy. Okay, and unless I can get the directions to the I store. Did. I'm going to sing the directions. I'm going to say, you go down the hill mm -hmm, till you get to the folk in the road. Now you're very right. Ah, that's the right way to go. Shock a lock when you get the stop sign. Don't you keep drawing, keep I on. Uh, how you doing, man? I'm hungry. Excuse me? Yeah, hold on. Hold on, brother man. I want to talk to you, You're the man. Yeah, uh, listen, this guy's been in my store for about three hours. Could you come get him? Stompy is my name. I have Stompy no idea who that is. Uh, uh, I, I don't know who Stompy. it is either. We just come pick him up. Stompy is my name. Get in off me, man. Well, why, why would I have to be able to come grab him if he doesn't live here? All right. You, you, you starve your residents. You turn a hose on them. What other kind of torture do you perpetrate? Sir, who who are you? And have you ever been in a nursing home? And I would I would like it if you do not make judgments without coming here. How dare you? How dare you, sir? Before I manage this mini market, I managed Country Squire Nursing Home for twenty two years. I knew the nickname of every one of my residents because I took the time to get to know them. As do I know the nickname. Of my well, name. obviously you don't know the nickname of every resident because you don't know Stumpy. He can just die of syphilis in jail. That's fine. Okay, that's great. I'll see you in hell. Okay. Big brother, big sister, this is Hi, my name's Bertram. I'm uh, moving to... Uh in just a few weeks, and I'm looking to get involved with the Big Brother organization. Okay. Uh, been involved with the uh, Big Brother organization for a number of years out here in Nevada, where I currently reside. Uh, how many? Uh, how many of these guys can you get? 
You can only actually get like one. We only match one, one. per individual. Mm. Actually, one per yeah, couple. I'm yeah. going to need a little more help than that. Uh, what do you guys got in the way of uh, Mexican kids? What do we have? Uh, what do you mean? Well, I mean, I would prefer Mexican kids. Well, okay. They work hard. So they don't run their mouth all day. Okay, okay. Not big eaters. They don't complain. They're appreciative. My kids, if he don't get 14, 15 hours worth of Xbox in or Nintendo in a day, he's P.O.'d. What is your name again? Bertram. I'll take a Chinese kid, too, if you got one of them. Little shifty, the Chinese. Never quite know what's uh, going know on. Never that. know what's going on behind those eyes. Never know. Uh, Probably know take a black that. kid, too, as I uh, use as sort of my enforcer. Don't expect them to do any work. That's not really in their genes, but certainly good enforcers, those blacks. Keep the Chinese and the Mexican guys moving. So maybe I'll just take one each. Just as long as, uh, as, long as they ain't scared of a little hard work. That's all. Right, I, I realize you. I don't want to break them. This ain't the Baton Death March, I'll tell you that. I want my workers in good shape. We can explain our program to you when you come into town. All right. Oh, oh, American Indian. Because they, they're they not scared of heights, and i got to clean my gutters out, and i got a three-story building. I don't have any idea, but we can explain our program to you when you come well, in. Well, you guys you guys got a book that have the kids' weights and size and uh, how much they can deadlift, something like that. That's going to help in the decision-making process. This is Kelly. Kelly. My name's Bertram. I'd like to uh, be hired on for the mall Santa position. Oh, you know what? Actually, I have a Santa already. Let me ask you a hypothetical. What if something awful was to happen to this guy? Let's not let that happen. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying it's going to happen. And God forbid, I wish it upon no man. But right. let's just say he was driving his car and someone cut his brake lines. Oh, my goodness. You need a backup, don't you? Yeah, you need a backup. You know in the Miss America pageant, they have the first runner-up? Yeah. That person has to fulfill the duties of Miss America if some guy was to snuff her out. Or she got sick or something. Right. This guy sits there for a few hours, his lap falls asleep, he Uh urinates on himself. You better go to the bullpen, sweet cheeks. Uh Uh-huh. Now listen to me. I'm qualified. I love kids. Um, I love Christmas. I love eggnogs and Vicodin. I love it all. All you need is a chair, huh? That's all I need. Watch, watch. Let's try this. Watch. <laughs> um, what's your name? Kelly. Have you been naughty or nice? I've been very nice. Very nice. What do you want? I want a uh, pony. Pony? All righty. All righty. There you go. <laughs> and you're set. Next. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's say I need a backup. Where can I contact you at? Well, let me tell you something. I'm everywhere and nowhere. I'm like the wind, baby. That's how I know whether you've been naughty or nice. And I know you've been naughty, too. I have not. You try to pass that nice crap off on old St. Nick, but he knows what you've been doing. Whatever. He knows what's in your underwear drawer, baby. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't give you that toy, did I? No. No. No elf in his right mind will work on that, baby. I know it's there. That is messed up. Maybe I'll give you some uh, C-cell uh, Duracells this year, huh? Not so much. Huh? You need some new batteries? <laughs> Maybe I know what goes on. You're lonely, lonely woman. <laughs> I come over there, pull my beard down, and get to business. I know when you're sleeping. I know when you're awake. Come on. And I know when you got that jackhammer out of your nightstand and you're working on yourself like some bad Caltrans project. You're horrible. Oh, yeah. But you like it, don't you, baby? (laughs) No. All right, baby. Merry Christmas. I'll be coming up your chimney soon. I don't think my husband would appreciate that. I'll take care of him. I'll cut his brake lines. Okay. All right. Happy Holidays Investigations may help you. Hi, is this... Investigations? This is Investigations, yes. Let me tell you my problem. Got a uh, stepson. He's going to be 16 in a couple weeks. Kid's beating himself like a bongo in his room every night. But I can't prove it. Let me get a hold of uh, Mr. A*** and have him call you. Would he be interested in that kind of work? If he doesn't, he would probably be able to refer you to someone. Mm -hmm. You have teenagers, ma'am? No, fortunately mine is past that. You got a son? No, a daughter. 
Thank God you don't have a son. I don't know. I got cool. married last year. It cost me a fortune. Still married yourself? Oh, yeah, 27 years. God bless you. A lot of hard work, but worth I, it. I got 33 years under my belt. Oh, I love to hear them that way. You know, you have your ups and your downs, like any any relationship. She's morbidly obese, so she eats and he beats. It's quite a household. Thank Christ I got satellite. Oh, yeah. How old is your daughter? 21. What happened? She got pregnant? Oh, no. 21 and not pregnant, huh? Right. Kept her virginity, though, until then, until the wedding night, right? She was, Yeah, they got married in May. Yep. I tell my daughter I better be able to bounce a quarter off your hymen on your 25th birthday. Okay. I want to drop a quarter on that hymen and get two dimes and a nickel back. Uh, well, good luck. Yeah. Okay. What, uh, what's he going to call? What number is he going to call? Call me at uh, 702-318-Blonde or Burnett, your, uh, your daughter. Um, Burnett? Yeah. It's good. They last longer, those brunettes. 318. Blondes look like they've been uh, sunblasted and left out on an island uh, by the time they hit 30. 702 318. Uh huh. You say your girl was a virgin before she got married? I don't know. Yeah. You don't want to know, do you? No. No, no mother wants to know. But uh, figure on the worst. Did you go to college? Yes. Probably got uh, passed around like a joint at a uh, Doobie Brother concert. Uh, I don't think yeah. so. Yeah, I don't want to think about that. Black college, like Grambling? No, here at UNLV. UNLV. All right. Roofy capital of the world. Um, I need to get your phone number, though. I have another caller holding. 702-318-ER. You say you've been married for 27 years? Hello. Hello, Barbara Finnegan. Yes. Hi. My name is uh, Kurt, but uh, I go by Tobias. Mm-hmm. I'm a telepsychic, but I'm uh, currently have not begun my business, which I'm going to do out of my home, and I'm calling people just to sharpen my skills. Okay. Now, you're a Virgo, yes? No. Sagittarius, yes? Keep going. Libra, yes? You're not doing very well. Uh, Gemini, yes? I, I don't really want to play your game. Yes, doing. yes, Gemini. I no. know it. I know it, Gemini. You're not a Gemini? Sir. I was testing you. Yes? And you were wrong. Oh, well, I'm not wrong yet. There's 12 months. So you don't need to guess if you're a true psychic. Barbara, I'm trying to hone my skills. I feel I have... Well, you're definitely not very good. Well, I feel I have some natural ability, and obviously that ability needs some sharpening before I start charging good money for it. Well, I guess you probably will go broke. Don't discourage Tobias. Ah, ah. Tobias feels a young girl, a young presence in the room, yes? You know what I'm feeling? I'm feeling my head up your ass here in a minute. I I knew that. But, ma'am, doesn't it make more sense for you to put your foot up Tobias's ass rather than your head? Which would you prefer? Well, personally, Tobias would prefer a young, nubile, black man. But, uh... I sense that about you. Yes, yes, Tobias knows. And you, you're currently unemployed, yes? I'm gainfully employed. Yes, Tobias knows. Are you listening to yourself? Yes. I know what you do for a living, yes? Oh, sure, go for it. What do you think I do for a living? Oh, truck driver, yes? No, I'm not a truck driver. Nanny, yes. No. You know what? You're, go- you're kind of failing, almost. You get one wrong, and all of a sudden I'm a failure? Sir. Your favorite 70s rock band? Yes. Yes? No. You're going to hang up on Tobias? Yes. Yes, Tobias knows. Hi, this is Misty. Can I help you? Misty, my name's Bertram. You guys uh, run a talent agency, right? Uh Uh-huh. How much is uh, the uh, minimum for the, let's say, two hours for some talent? Like, Like, well, what kind of job is it? Well, it wouldn't have to be doing much. Uh, it's a funeral. I- I'm not filming it or anything. I'm just, uh, father passed away uh, a couple days back due to uh, bury him on uh, Monday. He didn't have a lot of friends out in this part and uh, like to sort of fill out the crowd a little. Oh, okay. How many can I get? I know it's kind of short notice. 
we, I mean, we represent 600 people. So oh, do you? We have a good talent pool. Yeah, well, let's not overdo it. But uh, <laughs> I'm thinking about 20, okay. 20 heads. Are they are they decent actors? Well, yeah. Because I here's the thing. I don't uh, I don't want anybody uh, smiling or playing crab ass during the eulogy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, we would let them know that this is a job in there. I mean, what it was that you know you're expecting of them, and we'll let them know that. Now, do you, you guys deal with any stunt people? Not really. I'm not talking about flipping a car or doing the human torch, but if someone could jump in to the grave, that would probably be a plus. Of course, I'm willing to pay extra for it. We have to talk to one of our guys that could obviously, you know. All right. You guys handle all ethnicities over there? Because I'd like to show yeah. a little diversity. Yeah, we do. He wasn't a big fan of the blacks, but I don't want my uh, in-laws to know about this. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You, you deal with Asians? Uh, yes, we do. You do, huh? And Native Americans and Hispanic. Hispanic? All right. You got Mexicans, you yeah, got the Asians, got the Indians. Do you want them what to all be guys, or do you want there to be some oh, ladies? Oh, no, I like some ladies. Okay. These uh, young gals, they do any nude modeling? No. No. No, that wouldn't be appropriate at the funeral either. Definitely not. Right, but nothing wrong with a bikini, though. Yeah, they own bikinis. Yeah, all right. Tell the uh, gals under 30 to wear a bikini to the funeral. Okay. And uh, nubile uh, young blondes and uh, French cutter thong back. Bikinis, no one pieces, right? Okay. And what was your name again? Name's Bertram. Bertram. Yeah, you do any acting yourself? No, can't say I do. You, this be an easy, easy hundred bucks for you. <laughs> How do you spell Bertram? How do you look in a thong back? That's very inappropriate, sir. How dare you attack the grieving? You understand the pain I'm in? Excuse me? Have you ever lost a parent? Sir, I'll have Danny call you and she'll handle no this. No child should have to bury his parent. No, they shouldn't. You've never known the pain of having to hire girls in bikinis to grieve at their funerals, have you? Seriously, what do you look like in a thong back? Hello? Hi, my name is uh, Kurt, but I go by Tobias. I'm a uh, telepsychic, but this will not cost you a penny. I'm just trying to uh, hone my skills before I take it out into the workplace. Okay. If you don't mind, I'll just give you a quick reading over the phone. Okay. All right. First, there's a part of you that you show the outer world, yes? There's yes. a part of you that's been approved for Tobias and the rest of the world to see, and then there's a part of you that's hidden inside, yes? Yes. Yes, Tobias knows. Single woman, yes? Yes, yeah. I do have a husband. Yes, mm -hmm. you do have a husband, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what Tobias... You have children, yes? Yes. Your daughter. I have no daughter. I have boys. You cut me off, but Tobias was about to say your daughter don't have one. Why bring her up, yes? One son, excessive masturbator. I've the, got two sons. The other son. One's mine and one's a stepchild. Mm -hmm. The stepson, he enjoys the company of men, yes? Mm hmm But you love uh, him anyway, yes? You accept his lifestyle? Uh, I don't know if I accept that type of lifestyle. The spirits told Tobias, he's here, he's queer. Tobias needs you to get used to it. Tobias also knows that there's a Colt Roundup magazine in between the mattress and box spring, yes? But you love your child, yes? Yeah. Your son's room, very neat and well-decorated, yes? No. During the summer months, you have seen him in mock turtlenecks, yes? No. The frames of his glasses. A little hip. Yes? No. But he wears glasses, yes? Correct. Yes. Tobias knows. You have a secret burning attraction for your stepson, yes? Ew. How disgusting. Forbidden fruit, no. yes? No, no. After a no. glass of wine or two, your thoughts mm, stray, yeah. yes? You're an amorous no. woman, yes? You're a tigress, no. yes? No. Tobias knows. Tobias can smell passion on a woman, or possibly a yeast infection. Tobias, you need to work a little bit more on your psychic abilities. You worked with torpedoes in the Navy, yes? Used to. And you also worked with the tomahawk and harpoon yeah. missiles, yes? Yeah, you're obviously reading my resume. How dare you insult Tobias by questioning his integrity!
You trained staff on software program and WordPerfect 5.1, yes? Mm-hmm. Also did uh, weight testing and handling and stowage and maintenance? Yep, keep reading. Yes, Tobias. Job. How dare you. Can I, Tobias have your gay son's phone number? Yes. So you've got problems. Yes. Goodbye. Yes. <laughs> Good afternoon. Hi, my name's Burcham. Uh, you guys rent guys out for labor? We do. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much is that an hour per guy? What exactly are they going to be doing? Well, it's a little bit interesting, not the uh, basic ditch digging and uh, clearing a brush. Uh, my brother's in a cult, and um, I'm going to go uh, get him out of that cult, and I just need a little bit of backup with me. Nothing dangerous, no big deal. And uh, I figure with you guys, get myself a little break. I don't even know if we would do something like that. No guys that specialize in cult extraction at all? No, sir. Really? Uh-uh. Really? Really. Wow. And um, you got a brother yourself? I do. Uh, if you can call him a brother, I have one. Oh, yeah. You got problems, too, huh? Uh, we, we just never have gotten along. He molested you, didn't he? Oh, no, he didn't. Yeah. Yeah, my, uh... My brother did touch me. It's not uh, something I'm comfortable talking about with everybody, but, uh, you know. Right. I kind of count you as one of my own. I still feel like I owe him, though. He's still blood. Right. And I go in there uh, with a heavy heart, but, uh, like I said, he's blood, and i got to get him out of that cult. Okay. Well, give us a call back on Monday, and we'll have you speak with the salesperson and see what we can do. The, the, The touching wasn't so bad, but why do you have to do it on Easter? Do you, really, you know what kind of mixed message that sends to a young God-fearing nine-year-old? Well, unfortunately, I don't because I've never been in that experience. Yeah, sitting there uh, waiting for the Easter bunny. Instead, you get the Easter hand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Barely eat eggs. Well, give us a call, and we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'll leave him in there. Okay, well, you have a good day. Your brother never lifted a hand to you, never, you have no verbal abuse, nothing? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. But I can't really discuss that. I have a couple of guys right. that I need to that are standing here at my window, you're, and you're, I have a call on hold. You're, you're crying about verbal abuse, and I was sodomized repeatedly by my own blood? Okay. Sir, you, you got a lot of nerve, Missy. A lot of nerve. Sir, I, I am was gonna, a victim. Sir, I am going I to have to. a child. Sir, he I, stole I, my I, innocence. Okay, sir, I'm sorry, but I can't he take. He cracked it like a yoke. Sir, do you understand? I do need to hang up this. this and call. you had your brother call you a fudge face a couple of times, okay, I'm sorry, and you sir, feel I'm like you can count call. yourself you. amongst the victimized and the forsaken. Good evening. It's a great day. Five. This is how may I help you? You're your salesperson, aren't you? I'm an sales associate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ladies, all right, for selling jewelry, flowers, and, you know, oh kabuki makeup, but uh, yeah. <laughs> not not for selling the trucks. Okay, but I can help you. This is a job for a guy or a lesbo, not a uh, young, sweet flower like yourself. Okay, I'm sorry. You a you... single single guy? Little... I am. I'm a widower myself. Are you? Yeah. For a long time? What do you look like? Well, if I set an appointment for you, you'll know. Oh, you'll know. You'll, you'll know me. <laughs> I know you. Salt and pepper hair. Clef in the chin. You could hold a piece of toast in. Oh, quit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shop glasses. Yeah, and I can handle just about any load, you big gal. Yeah. That's what I like. Oh, really? We get over there. We, um, I come by. We'll take a test ride, right? Right. All right. Maybe we head up to the lake, watch the submarine races. You know what submarine. I'm saying? There's a reason I like a pickup truck over a sedan. You know what, what that reason is? It's got a bed attached to it. Uh, okay, was, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad he knows. I was scared to ask. I'll put my futon back there and get busy. Okay. <laughs> oh, believe me. I'll, go, I'll give you a little something I call the velvet buzzsaw. Oh, really? Oh, man. <laughs> you never seen anything like it. Okay. Say hello to little Bertram. He's lonely. So let me make an appointment for you. All right. To come in. Yeah. How about we make an appointment for me to in your underpants? Oh, now stop. You know you like it. How about it for the truck? Come on, I'm a chubby chaser. <laughs> I'll go down on you right. Okay. I don't got any pride. Okay. I'll get down there. <laughs>
I'll be down there for an hour and then some. Okay. You know, you won't know what hits you. Your eyeballs will be spinning around like a slot machine. All right. We'll be doing something that rhymes with truck. You know what I'm saying, Mama? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Okay, so seriously, can I make an appointment for you to come in? Yeah, sure. Like Monday? You're going to be there, right? Monday I will. All right, so what do you look like? What can I look for? I'm Mexican. Mexican. See. Ah, I like my little burrito. <laughs> going to dip my chimichanga in your guacamole. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'll bust you open like a pinata with my flesh stick. Now, why would I want that? Oh, so I can get at that sweet, sweet candy. Okay. Because I bet you just chock full of razzles. Okay. Oh, yeah. May I have your number? No. Why's that? Tired. Why's that? I got to be honest with you. I've been beating off the whole time and I finished. Okay. Yeah, so I, I got to mop up. Okay. All right. That's disgusting. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you. Shannon. Shannon. Yes. Name's Bertram. Uh-huh. You uh, run in the uh, Army store? Yeah. You in the service yourself? What? No. No? Nope. How old are you, Shannon? I'm uh, like 43. Just missed Nam, didn't you? Yeah, missed that. Let me tell you what you missed. Yeah. Hell on fire, my friend. Is that bad? It's been 30 years. Feels like it was yesterday. Really? I close my eyes. I'm right back there. No kidding. Sitting in a bunker. Mortar rounds going off around me. Smoking hash out of a human skull. That once beat a mother to death with her own child. Oh, come on. Ain't nothing to laugh about. No, I don't think it's funny. Let me tell you. Right? Just a lot of friends. Espinoza, Johnson, Lieutenant Snap, Chuck Crackle, Major Pop. All good men. All strong men. Well. Let me tell you about them uh, Viet Cong, the hidden caves. Very elaborate caves. Huh. Some would open into whole rooms. Places to dine, recreation areas, foosball. It was all there. Really? Oh, yeah. You want to trade some of your stuff for is that what you're thinking? Yeah. I got some stuff that's uh, considered a little black market. Some ears, some skulls, stuff like that. <laughs> I don't need any of that. Don't need any of that? I don't need any of that. <laughs> you put some of those VC ears on eBay. Believe me. There's some pretty wealthy Asians willing to spend some top dollar for that. Really? Oh, yeah. Never heard of an ear necklace, huh? No, no. that's what they, they like those, huh? Skull f- fanny pack? The skull fanny pack? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Vagina purse. Change pouch. Made out of a human vagina. Wow. Oh, yeah. That ain't the half of it. That's hard to believe, but I guess that is, yeah, like you said, that probably ain't the half of it. So. No, oh, it was macabre, my friend. Got a walking stick with a human foot on the end of it. Oh. No? N- nostril pencil holder? None of that for you, huh? No. No. Oh. Got a bong made out of a thigh bone. Oh, my God. You want to make an offer? No, I think I'll pass on that. No. Hey, that's, some, that's some stuff, though, that... Uh, yeah, it's a little gruesome. You guys buy Beanie Babies? Beanie bit No. Oh. Well, I didn't get those out of cave. My niece left them when she was visiting. <laughs> Third tour I was in there. Earned a purple heart. Huh? Twisted my ankle pretty bad. Uh-huh. Got a high ankle sprain. Very painful. Very painful. Hip bone fruit bowl. Rectum umbrella holder. <laughs> Don't laugh. Some guy out there missing a... Well, he's probably dead. You're right. All right, buddy. Okay. Never forget. All right. Never forget what? Mom. I had her, too. All right, man. Take care. Shannon? Yep. That's a chick's name. I know. <laughs> I know. What's up? Not always. All right, buddy. I'll see, right. you. see you in hell. All right. Hello. Name's Bertram. Seen them big feet. Want to go after one with you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Seen that Yeti up there? Seen that Sasquatch? You seen him out where you are? Seen mine back in 72, uh, back in Louisiana, Missouri. Wow. I heard you were attacked by one. No, it didn't get to me. I, you know, I, there was a bunch of dogs involved in it, and the dogs kind of helped me out. And mm-hmm. Dogs were running away. It was killing dogs. They were finding dogs with their heads ripped off. 
Boy, howdy. That's uh, that's a Bigfoot, all right. Oh, shit, yeah. I walked over a damn barbed wire fence without even losing a stride. Are you going to take him down? Are you going to kill one? I'm planning on it. I'm basically looking at You see that movie, The Dirty Dozen? Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Well, except for it's three guys. Oh, well, you think he can bag one of those suckers? I damn well know I can. Tell me what you've seen. All I know is it's got beady red eyes. It's covered with hair. Walks like an old Jew. And it needs to die. Okay, you, you, you're damn sure this ain't some idiots out there in a damn suit playing a prank, right? Do I sound like some kind of jackass who get on the phone and waste your time for a laugh? Well, no, but I just don't right, involved then. in some kind of murder or some idiot that's wearing a suit. <laughs> I've shot plenty of men. I know the difference between a man and a Bigfoot. I need eyes. I need an extra set of eyes. I need an extra trigger finger. I also need bait. What are you going to use for bait? Well, Bill, that's why we're talking. Well, that surely ain't going to be me. Bait was a bad uh, bad word. I shouldn't have used that. Let's just call it uh, decoy. How many? Uh, is it you and who else? It's going to be uh, just me, you, and an Indian tracker. Let me just say this, Bill. Only stipulation. I squeezed the trigger on the kill shot because it's personal. Okay. You don't mind sharing a tent, do you, Bill? Well, I got my own. All right, we'll use yours. You don't mind bunking up, do you? I'll pack my own. We'll do that thing where we uh, marry the sleeping bags. We just uh, zip them together, make one big pouch. Just for heat. Okay, no hanky well, panky. You do that with your Indian friend. You can do it with oh, me. <laughs> oh, he'll be in there. Uh, yeah. No, I'm not really interested, man. I'm, I appreciate the Bill, I, I think you should know. I do sleep in the nude, but I don't go that way. Well, you know, I, I you know, I figured, uh, you know, I mean, bring a forty-four and some water-soluble lube. Uh, no, appreciate the call. All right, Bill. All right, take care. Yeah. Bye. Bueno. Who's this? Bill. Yeah. Name's Bertram. I'm a bounty hunter. Oh, hi. How are you? Good. Looking for some work. How'd you hear about me? Oh, you know, I got my ear to the ground. <laughs> you got any perps you need brought in? Well, I just gave some away to the, uh, a guy the other day. Yeah. What's his name? Adam. Adam. What is he, Jewish? Yeah, he is. Hey, you want a baker's dozen of bagels, you send a Jew out. You want a perp back, you send a God-fearing Christian out. <laughs> That's just who I am, ma'am. Nothing against the Jews, but I don't like them. <laughs> Didn't see a lot of them in Nam. Right. Well, I have a Mexican I've been trying to find. You and everybody else. Where's this cat? I don't know for sure. Man, that was a stupid question, wasn't it? Yeah. He's supposed to have the purest cocaine on the street. That's a perp I'd like to take down. You want him dead or alive? Well, I... <laughs> Be honest. And believe me, I've been around the block enough to make it look like he started it. You know how the wiggle works. No, I don't, because I'm not a violent person. I'll take his ass right down. Right down to Chinatown. What's the bond for on this guy? 20000 Look out. Just a moment. I got a call coming in. Hang 20 on. Twenty grand. All right, buys a hell of a lot of tequila I got and hirachi. Hang on. All right, I'll hang on. I may catch him while I'm on hold. Sir? Mm-hmm. When I put you on hold, here's this bounty hunter calling me that I haven't heard from for a month. What's his name? Uh, Lenny, um... Lenny... That guy's a pussy. Do you know him? I know Lenny's work. Soft hand Lenny. Ain't good for nothing. No, he's not. He can't even pick up the Sunday newspaper. He couldn't find a pair of culottes for a f You understand? <laughs> Yeah. You got guys working for you named Lenny and Adam. No wonder no one's coming back. What kind of pussy parents name their kid Adam anyway? Anyway, he does a pretty good job most of the time. Adam does. Adam couldn't find his ass if he was squatting on a mirror. No, that's not true. He's pretty tough. Hell of a lot tougher than that Nam. Just take guys like Adam, chew him up, make boot polish out of him. Oh, yeah. What's your phone number? 702. 
792. Tell you that Lenny's on my last nerve, too. 792. Had uh, custom Harley Zippo. Lent it to him to light a Tipperello. That was six years ago. You know him from way back? Hell yeah, Lenny and I go back. Really? You kidding? Eat it, Denny's Lenny. Cheap bastard. You know his wife? I don't know why I'm opening up to you this way, but I, I had I had my time with Lenny's wife. Sir, can you see your rest of your phone number? Because I got to go bond this oh, guy. All right, I'm sorry. I was with her long before Lenny was, and I don't think Lenny ever lets me forget it. Can't let go. She's tight, what's, though. I'll tell you what's what. The re- what's the rest of your phone number? Oh, okay. 702. She may have gone to seed since she's been with Lenny, but I'll tell you, she was one fine piece of ass when I was you with her. You know what? I'm going to hang up on you if you don't give me your phone number. 702. 792. Once pulled a three-way with her with Lenny. Oh, yeah. She went that way. Quit telling me that stuff. I don't want to hear it. Are you well, going to give me the phone number? Unless, if we're going to work together, you got to know the truth. No. So Lenny has a erectile Are you gonna difficulties. Are going to give me the phone number? Goodbye. I'll try it. 702. Phoenix Rescue Mission. Mike speaking. How can I help you? Mike? Yes. How do you do? Name's Birch. Um, probably okay. uh, heard the name. Made uh, quite a few uh, medium to large uh, donations to the uh, mission over the years. And uh, Okay. I um, uh, <clears throat> could use a little help. Okay. Uh, I'm looking for some bums to come by the house and help me uh, set up for Christmas. Uh-huh. What I'm looking for, basically, is a sort of your able-bodied bum, not uh, your sort of dried-up alky bum. Okay. I'm looking for bums that don't have a uh, lengthy criminal history. Okay. So, uh, fairly clean records. Hey, I don't mind if they did a little shoplifting or beat their old lady. I'm talking more putting a shiv in a white guy, that kind of crime. Let me transfer you to someone else if I could well, can, help you, okay? Can I, can I talk to one of the hobos? No. What about a vagrant? I can't allow that. Not on this phone. Yeah, you, ha- you have any drifters or transients there? Let me transfer you to Chaplain Tony. How about junkies or runaways? Chaplain Tony. Chaplain Tony. Yes. Yeah. Do you guys rent bums? Um, employers come down here and they, you know, they pick people up and stuff. So if you want to come down here, you know, you can come down and if somebody wants to come and help you, I'm sure that could probably be arranged. You uh, guys, uh, so how you guys fix for drifters? Um, Pretty good crop? Yeah. Yeah, we got quite a few here. Quite a few drifters. How yeah. about hobos? Yeah. Yeah, we're full every night, at least 100. Boxcar Johnnies? <laughs> yeah. Why don't you come on down and check us out? Well, I, you know, I, me and my wife going out bum shopping uh, tomorrow, but I just don't want to kill the whole day out looking at bums. I'd rather narrow it down, do it in advance. She likes to bum shop on the Internet, but I told her I'm old-fashioned. I like to thump them in person. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Kick the shin. See yeah. how they're doing. Yeah. I was like, let me tell you something. I've been burned a few times. Wife, uh, you're on the internet. You find a couple of good bums. You have them come by the house. You see them in real life. Uh, Next thing you know, one of them's on top of your daughter. The other one's gotten into your liquor cabinet. I don't need that to happen again. Yeah. Uh, Is there a bum deposit I got to leave? No, sir, there isn't. All right, we'll just chain them together and I'll drag them behind the van. Okay. All right. Merry Christmas and a happy Chinooka. See you later. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Headquarters. Hi, you guys sell mattresses? Yes, we do. Fantastic. I have a little bit of a sleeping disorder. Oh, yeah? A lot of bad memories. You know, when you close your eyes, they all come back. Have you ever been to NAM? No. In country? No. Never been in the service? No. How old a man are you, Jim? I'm 40 years old. Killed a lot younger than you. Killed okay. a lot of men over there. Okay. Yeah. Funny to you. Not funny to me. Now when I wake up in the middle of the night covered with sweat. Right. Throwing punches in the wind. Nice. Yeah. Nice for you. But not nice for me. My wife wakes up and I'm holding a crochet needle over her head. About ready to put her out of her misery. Not nice then, Jimbo. No, maybe she gets separate beds. Tried that. No good. Cut me off. Interesting. Man can't go. But so long without some poontang, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, I know that. Back when I was in country, we used to get that around every corner. A couple of bucks, little sucky effie. Nice. Nice. 
Nice for you, but not nice for the Vietnamese whore I knocked up. Things happen. Things happen for you, but not for the c**ks I killed over there. What's happening for them? They're decomposing. That's what's happening to them. Interesting. Interesting for you. Not interesting for the brothers I left behind. No, that's sad. Sad for you. Sad for all of us. Sad for all of us. I think you got me on that one. <laughs> all right, so what do you guys got? California King over there? Got it all. You got them uh, motorized beds? Sure. What's the, uh, how many pounds can that lift? Because my, like I said, my wife, uh, she ain't no flyweight. Good 300 pounds. 300. Sure. That'll lift half her. You got all anything? right, then we're going to have to think of something else. She has a disability, you know. Okay. It's a thyroid disorder. Interesting. Interesting for you. Not interesting for the team of doctors who have been trying to solve that fat riddle for over 20 years. Hmm. Hmm for you. But not hmm for me. No. When I'm going downstairs, you know what I'm saying? That's scary. Yeah. Scary for you, not for me. Scary for me? Oh, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah. You turn that one around on me, buddy. You got it. Caught me off guard. I like the cut of your jib, buddy. Yeah? Yeah. Come on down. I'll buy you a beer. Let's go out. You seem like good people. I am good people. Good people for you. That's right. I'll be the guy who's pulling up in the Ford F-250 with a God's Guts and Guns bumper sticker. Loving it. Got the Uncle Henry a hooga horn. <laughs> Tilt some cold ones, finish you off with a reach around. Oh, hey now. Good for you. I don't think so. Well, good for me. That's right. Not good for the carpet. No way. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm yeah. calling in reference to your ad, Labor right. Construction Crew. You, uh, you do any drugs? Nah. Nah, nah, I'm clean. Clean. You ever done any time? Have I? Yeah, I've done time. Little time? I did seven years. Jesus Christ. What happened? Well, we was in a bar. I was drinking. He was drinking. And mm -hmm. he told me he didn't want, um, niggas with white women. And what? And he got into a bar fight. Yeah, because my girlfriend was white. What'd you do? Put a shiv in him? He had a knife. I had a razor blade. What kind of blade you have? Twin blade or Mach 3? Nah, yeah, I had the, 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 the twin blade. Twin blade. Lady Bick was my weapon of choice. <laughs> Is he all right? Yeah, he lived. Now, nah, what's his beef then? <laughs> hey, you all right, guy, man. <laughs> wow. He's like the Puerto Rican Elmer Fudd. Oh, shit. <laughs> You're stoned right now, aren't you, son? Nah. You no, I'm, not. I'm out here. I'm, I'm out here with my table on 96th Street and Broadway because I have my vendor's license. I've been in the military. You ever deployed anywhere? No, nah, we was getting ready to go to Grenada in 84. I was a NAM. Now, that was a war, son. I did three tours over there, Michael. You're a bad man if you did that. When I got back stateside, you think there was a parade waiting for me? There were protesters they waiting for They protested me. Those limp-wristed, bean-counting, glasses-wearing, fudge-packing Democrats. They had no That's goddamn right. respect for a man who protected their right to protest. That's right. Only thing that made the pain go away was chasing the dragon. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Guy had a dragon. Was on a string. He used to run with it. And I'd just I'd be right behind him. Give me that dragon. <laughs> it's a good old time. Do any do any drugs in the joint, Mike? Nah, you can't no more. No. Damn Prop 183. Did away with the drugs in the joint. Yeah, they, they tell on you now. Now they lock you up if you smoke a joint in the I joint. I tell you, any of those stoolies. You want to know what we did? We found a stoolie in Nam. Cut his f***ing dick off. You're damn right we would. Cut his nuts off. I'd grab a fungo bat and yell, turn two. You know what I'm saying? Take infield with a sack. That's right. All right, so but you give me a call? Yeah, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a call because I like you. <laughs> All right. All right, you take care of that, Johnny. All right, Mr. Bird, to be good. Godspeed, son. All right, Godspeed. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Katie. Got a niece named Katie. Uh -huh. I was just calling about the babysitting position. Mm -hmm. and can I ask a question about sure. it? Is it like a long-term, short-term, just for one day, for a week, or a month? This is a long-term. 
job okay. opportunity. Uh, I'll explain my uh, situation. My name is Bertram. Uh, I'm out during the day. Uh, my mm-hmm. wife is a, a stay-at-home mom, but she can't get out of bed uh, because she's uh, morbidly obese. So uh, it's important to have somebody around the house to take care of the kids, uh, seeing as how uh, mom can't. Sure. And that's where you come in, Katie. Uh-huh. Do you have any experience with kids? Yes, I do. Yeah, I kid- was an experienced babysitter. You are. Um, my babysit family, yes, mm-hmm. and family friends. Mm-hmm. You uh, have kids of your own? No, I do not. All right. I'm 19 years old. 19. Yeah, and I'm a student in college. All so. right. All right. Too young to have kids. <laughs> yep. Smart, very responsible. Yes, I try to be. Well, you got to use that birth control. Yep. <laughs> yep. You uh, IUD, Norplant, what do you use? Uh, well, that's none of your business, really. <laughs> well, I'm making it my business. <laughs> well, I, I would rather not answer. And if it's, if it's Sp- depending on the job, then sponge? I won't take it. You use the sponge, huh? No. Pull out? I'm not. T- Pull out. That, that's right? yes. I hope you please forget my phone number. Please. Your b- back door? Your back door, gal? No babies in the back door. I'll tell you that. God knows I've tried. I'm going to report you to the police, you disgusting f***. Hey, how dare you, ma'am? Hello? Uh, how you doing? Hey, you calling about the uh, NBA squad I'm starting up? Uh, yeah. That's great. What's your name and how tall are you? Uh, my name is Omar and uh, I'm 6'5". Uh, you got long arms too, right? Uh, true, true. Probably change your light bulb on a fluorescent fixture in a guy's garage without using a ladder. Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's say a guy had a neighbor who he didn't get along too good with because uh, he allegedly poisoned his dog, but he had a nice uh, persimmon tree, but he couldn't quite get to it over the eight-foot fence. You're the kind of guy who could probably reach the fruit, yeah? Yeah. All right. Got a strong back, do you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Strong enough to move my 600-pound wife out of her bed if she needed a sponge bath? Yeah, I can move anybody. You move anybody, huh? Not this bitch. Egyptian slaves couldn't move this one. <laughs> what do you drink? What do I drink? Yeah. You know. Hypnotic and Hennessy. Hypnotic and Hennessy. Yeah. What are you doing right now, Omar? Playing uh, Double Dragon Return. What are you wearing? A Big Daddy outfit. Big Daddy, huh? Seems pretty hot to be wearing all them clothes. No. Uh. I like to relax in the nude around my place. Don't your balls get hot? No. I got a kiln going on down there if I wear so much as a pair of jockey shorts around the house. You need to get that checked out. Yeah, I need the right guy to check it. You shave downstairs? No. No, no, man. I, 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 I don't go down there unless that thing's cleaned up. You know what I mean? No. I don't go on the field unless it's dragged. You know what I'm saying, brother? No. You like, you like the fellas, Omar? No, oh my God, I like women. You ever been with a guy with a prosthetic limb? You ever been with a bullet in between your head? I'll tap on the door three times. You just back your ass up against the mail slot and don't say nothing for about 20 minutes. Mm-hmm, all right. All righty. You keep thinking that. Put a little margarine around that thing. I don't want to chafe. Hold on. Uh... Hey, man, it's a sick n- on the phone, dog. Who is NBA this guy? Can he play hoop? Hey, dog, don't call that number, does, dude. Does he like the gents? Hell yeah, man. This is some old bullshit. N- I thought this was some real NBA shit. How about a little honky sandwich? They pull an Oreo on me. I ain't picky. N- crazy, n***a. N- hey. Hey, and that Dennis speaking. Hi, uh, my name's Bertram. What's your name? Danny. Danny, got a little bit of a situation here. You guys do uh, pest control? Uh, what, do, what kind of a problem are you having? It's my wife. She's got ants. Uh-huh. Uh, she's, she's a lot of woman. Uh-huh. She, she takes up uh, almost the whole goddamn bedroom, to tell you the truth, Danny. Uh-huh. She's upward to 700 pounds, although they can't weigh her. I would have to uh, put out monitor traps. 
because they don't make sprays you can spray around when people are occupying the room. She's a tough cookie. She can take it. <laughs> yeah. We'll put a respirator on her and you can spray away. I don't think I could go there. I don't see them getting off the bed for the trap. Well, they will. I've been doing this for a lot of years, so I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've been sleeping next to this blob for a lot of years, so I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Really? 700-pound anthill over there. All right. I think they've colonized her. So I'm, uh-huh. that's why I'm saying I think the traps around the room probably aren't going to do it. No, they'll take it back to the queen. Uh, if we could find the queen, I think we could eliminate the problem. Right. Oh, well, maybe you should come by and we'll... Uh, do a little uh, probing. Nothing inappropriate. Uh huh. Not getting too close to the sticky trap. Okay. I'll lift up the fold. You go in after the queen. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're laughing now, but you ain't going to be laughing when you go in there. Can't be that bad. Well, you know what a room smells like when a person hasn't left it in 11 uh-huh. years? Uh uh-uh. uh. That's yeah. ass on death, my friend. Oh, I've been in the worst. Tell me what was worse than this. Oh, my uh, wife, her uh, brother passed away. They didn't find him for like three weeks later out in the mobile home out in Scappoo. Saw a lot of death and name, Dan. I tell you what, I know what it smells like. You know what I'm saying, brother? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so, lost so a lot of good address. guys over there. Espinoza, Johnson, Rogers, Hammerstein, Calvin, Hobbs. Simon, Garfunkel, Owens, left them all behind. Actually, Owens wanted to stay behind. He opened a little grocery mart. Mary's got three kids. Doing pretty good. Oh, good. Oh, wait a minute. She's trying to move. Is she? Holy Christ. You guys work with possum? Uh Uh-uh. Okay. I got to make another call then.